Prime Minister's office. Prime Minister speaking. Greetings. This is the Secretary of War at the State Department of the United States. We have a problem. The companies want something done about this sluggish world economic situation. Profits have been running more than a little thin lately, and we we need to stimulate some growth. Now, we know that there's an alarmingly high number of young people roaming around in your country with nothing to do but stir up trouble for the police and damage private property. It doesn't look like they'll ever get a job. It's about time we did something constructive with these people. We've got thousands of them here, too. They're crawling all over. The companies think it's time we all sit down, have a serious get-together, and start another war. The president, oh, he loves the idea. All those missiles streaming overhead to and fro, napalm, people running down the road to get on fire. The Soviets seem up for it. The Kremlin's been itching for the real thing for years. You want a little going away present for Mr. Brezhnev? Hell, Afghanistan's no fun. So, what do you say? We don't even have to win this war. We just want to cut down on some of this excess population. Hell, just start up a draft. Draft as many of those people as you can. We'll call up every last youngster we can get our hands on and give them an hour or two to learn how to use an automatic rifle and send them on their way. El Salvador, another Northern Ireland or a moderately repressive regime in South America. We'll just cook up a good Soviet threat story in the Middle East. We need that oil. We had Libya all ready to go, and Colonel Gaddafi's hit squad didn't even show up. I tell you, that man is unreliable. The Russians had their finger on the button just like we did for that one. Now just think for a minute. We can make this war so big, so big. The more people we kill in this war, the more the economy will prosper. We can get rid of practically everybody on your... Uh, if we plan this right, take every loafer on welfare right off our computer roll. Oh, don't worry about those demonstrators. Just pump up your drug supply. So many people have hooked themselves on heroin and amphetamine since we took over. Just like Vietnam, we had everybody so busy with LSD they never got too strong. Get the war functioning just fine. It's easy. We got our college kids so interested in beer, they don't even care if we start manufacturing germ bombs again. A nuclear stockpile in their backyard, they wouldn't even know what it looked like. So how about it? Hey, look, war is money. The arms manufacturers tell me unless we get our bomb factories up to full production, the whole economy is going to collapse. The Soviets are in the same boat. We all agree the time has come to the big one. So what do you say? Oh, 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 marvelous. That's excellent. We knew you'd agree. The companies will be very pleased. Thirty-four minutes into the attack, the strategic forces of the United States have suffered a crippling blow. Of the 1,000 Minuteman missiles, only 46 remain operational. Of the 330 B-52 bombers, all but 22 have been destroyed on the ground. Of the 41 ballistic missile submarines, 17 have been destroyed in port, and an unknown number are presumed lost at sea. The attack has been restricted to strategic military targets. Eight million Americans are dead. The United States is given an ultimatum. Any attempt at retaliation will result in the certain annihilation of America's urban population. Nine minutes later, the president orders all surviving U.S. forces to cease fire. I now put these planes, which hither ye have fought from regions where I reign, Ye fools and priests, I spit upon your fire. 